This is another six-player progressive card game which is being played on Classic Risk Map. I'm the red player in this game and it seems I've got a relatively good setup. I have my troops in three different places, so I just assume my South American troops will be crushed in case the white player decides to go for it, I could add some troops in it myself, but judging by my opponent's stats I play with a bunch of low rank players, and low rank players are desperate of getting continents, so I will rather not risk of my troops getting crushed, especially when the white player is the last player meaning that he is going to get even 6 troops in his very first turn. For now I added some troops in Europe and will see if my opponents are going to move their troops out from it so I could capture it easily, if not, then it's fine also, I could be without a continent, I'm not going to crush a bunch of other players troops as I wouldn't be guaranteed to hold it at all, and then it would probably take a while to capture it anyway. I think most importantly I will try to have my troops like in at least two different places, so just not to be a very easy target to get taken out when the set values become high. What I see is that the yellow player wants to go for Australia, and then so do pink. The 5 vs 3 blitz roll the yellow player took in Australia to crush 3 pink's troops on the territory of Western Australia was supposed to be unfavorable, but besides winning it, the yellow player hasn't lost a single troop from it also. Then the pink player added some troops in Australia too which was already bad choice because it's just bad to fight for a continent, and then surprisingly crushed 3 blue troops in it, the 3 troops of the player who isn't even going for that continent, and by doing that giving the advantage to the yellow player to prevail in this Australia fight increasing yellow's chances to capture it. But when 2 players are contesting for Australia, it probably wouldn't be surprising that there would be some player who would think one move ahead and try to steal Australia from whichever player who ends up capturing it after highly destroying himself. And in this situation there are even two players who are sneakily waiting, I think the green player's intentions are very clear, and then I would assume the blue player might be thinking about it as well. So that's like possible that the yellow player wipes out pink from Australia, then the green player takes Australia from yellow, and then the blue player takes Australia from green. And that would be a very comedic situation to see for sure. For Australia hunting players. Anyway, as you see I don't have my South American troops anymore. The white player had left his troops on both of the connecting my troops territories, the territory of Peru and Brazil. In case he would have left no troops in Peru, then I would have been able to attack one troop territory making the white player to capture it easier, or if he hadn't left any troops on Brazil, then I might have been able to move all of those troops out from South America so both of us would have avoided the troops waste. And since the white player blocked the way for me I wasn't able to do so, but since I knew that my troops are going to get crushed anyway, I just had to use them on the weaker white player's army, so in case if I successfully captured it, then I wouldn't need to capture a territory anywhere else in that turn. But these manual rolls I took just weren't really successful, but I mean in one way or another one these troops would have been wiped out anyway, so it was a definitely good decision to manual roll the white player's army and try capturing that territory, rather than doing nothing with it and just waiting till the white player crushes it. From what I see I could predict that the white player is going to use the South American turtle strategy, the strategy in which you build a big army on the territory of Peru, while not really guarding your borders, so by doing that your opponents wouldn't be threatened by you, but at the same time they would be afraid to invade you as they knew that your biggest army could be used on crushing them. And in case some player decides to invade you, then you're only going to lose a few troops. When using this strategy since you're not really irritating other players you expect that they leave you alone and focus on each other instead, and while they're fighting, you're just hurtling and waiting for the moment when you end up having more troops than all of the opponents combined with your low ranked opponents eliminating and destroying each other. So just the thing is that this strategy playing with progressive cards is really irrelevant and gives you more harm than benefit. So you should only apply this strategy when playing with fixed cards. In progressive cards your aim should be to seek eliminate other players out when it's worth for their cards, so after eliminating such players you would become even stronger than you were before. 
and how are you supposed to eliminate someone when you're just putting almost all of your troops into a blocked place? It will be basically impossible for you to win, so unless other players don't understand how to properly play with progressive cards either. Progressive cards are not about the balance of the game, and the players who know about the importance of taking other players out are not going to crush themselves randomly, they're just only looking to completely take others out when it will be worth for the cards, and with eliminating those players they are going to become even stronger. So if you keep blocking the majority of your troops, then if you're lucky enough, then at the best case scenario you're just supposed to get the second place, in case the player who takes others out leaves you for the very end. But of course there are still chances that someone fails taking someone out, and if your turn is being next, you might still be able to take that highly weakened player out and with trading an A set becoming overpowered, but the chances for that happening are low, so if you want to win, you need to put your troops in the place in which they wouldn't become blocked, and seek eliminate others out when it's worth for the cards by yourself. Like for the example the blue player is eliminating pink right now. But let's actually see how many troops he is going to get. And alright he's got even 18 troops. And then the pink player's elimination put him one card ahead, when he will end his turn he is going to have three of them while the yellow player with already making his turn has only two. So I just don't understand why he wasted some of his precious troops on invading the white player. I mean one thing you don't want to randomly weaken yourself, as you want to hoard these troops to have enough of them to eliminate other players, and then at the same time you don't want to weaken yourself so you wouldn't become an easier target for others to be taken out as well and then you don't want to make your opponent an easy target for other players either. And finally if your opponent keeps having his army blocked, then just let him simply have that useless two troops continent which doesn't give him a value at all when the set values became high. Just let him keep his army blocked, so he neither could eliminate others nor especially you. So I'm not sure why the blue player attacked white after eliminating the pink player as at first he really seemed to be a player who knows what he is doing, but then he additionally ended up blocking his army himself. If he wanted to increase his advantage a little bit over others when it comes to troop bonuses, then he could have rather captured Africa over invading the white player into South America and then being afraid of some sort of retaliation and because of that putting his troops into a blocked place in the bottom of Africa. The good thing is that the white player still keeps his biggest army in Peru blocked, so he is the least threatening opponent for sure who I would say has the lowest chances to win. And not only because of that, but because he is supposed to trade in a set the last, so he might just be eliminated before he even will be able to trade in a set, and then he is the weakest player as well, not only the blue player weakened him, but also he immediately traded in the lowest 4 troops set at 3 cards. Anyway, with the green player bringing in his both biggest armies in North America I predicted that he might want to go for North America, so this is why I moved my A troops from it out. But now he combined both of his armies into one, so actually he could be a player who understands that your aim should be to eliminate other players out when it's worth for their cards and that you shouldn't waste your troops randomly. I mean either that or he is going to capture North America in his next turn weakening himself and making other players as easier targets to be taken out for someone else. The yellow player wanting to fight for Australia in the beginning of the game looked like a very inexperienced player, but so far he didn't end up blocking his Siam army, and at the same time doesn't waste his troops in North America which make him be more spread out so props to him for that. But then he really needs to fortify these troops from Indonesia to Siam rather than adding even more of them in the blocked place. Anyway, my worry now is that the green player could potentially have a set at 3 cards and because of that he could decide to take me out when not being able to trade in a set in the same turn which would ruin the game not only for me but him himself as well. So because of that I was considering moving my army to somewhere else so some other player would become more accessible to be taken out over me, so the green player would consider to take some another player out over me with me staying alive since the green player wouldn't be able to trade in a set in the same turn. But at the end I decided just to stay where I am. Also the blue player was at 5 cards, 
but I think it would been relatively risky to try taking him out due to five of his troops being in North America, I think very likely I wouldn't have gotten to them, so I decided not to take that risk. As then additionally what I saw that I probably won't be the player who he will be looking to take me out, as that might not even be enough troops. I predicted that if he goes taking someone out then that player will probably be white, especially with blue attacking the white player before. Now what I see is that the blue player has army of 34 troops while the white player has 31 troops in total, but the blue player additionally needs to do two troop splits, or it would have been one if after Egypt he would have gone to southern Europe, and because of those splits I assume he could very likely fail. But alright. He's just got an insanely good blitz roll crushing these white players troops. Though he could still fail which would give away me the game, everything now depends on the 3 vs 1 blitz roll. And very luckily for the blue player at the end he manages to take out white successfully. But it seems he won't be able to take anyone else out though. And because of that the opportunity to shine comes for me, but whether it's a showtime I don't know yet. I think I will have enough troops to take the yellow and green players out for sure. And then we will see if there is enough troops for the blue player as well. With the blue player having the most of troops I want to leave him last, and because of that I think it mostly makes the sense for me to start with the yellow player over green, as if I took the green player out first, then I would cut off my army from yellow, while with taking the yellow player out first, my army remains accessible to go taking out the green player next even though I had to do the Australian troop split. And yeah, after eliminating yellow, the green player was just eliminated also. And what I see is that I should have enough troops for the blue player even though I didn't end up having enough troops to trade in two sets at once. And yeah, it pretty much seems it's a GG. Apparently it was my time to shine and dominate the game. And now let's check out what were the ranks of my opponents. And alright, the pink player was a novice, the green player was a beginner, and the yellow, blue and white players were intermediates.